Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, mysterious voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I found in my travels. Today it is Poetry Thursday, so I wanted to talk about some poetry that has interested me as of late. Uh, and today's poem is all about the movie version of someone's life. I am referring to Beginning with 1914 by Liesel Mueller. For those who don't know, Liesel Mueller is a German-American writer. Uh, she um, mostly got her work published uh, from the 1960s onward, uh, and she died in 2020 uh, before COVID, so or before COVID had hit America. Uh, so hopefully that wasn't um, something that had affected her. Um, uh, and uh, she frequently wrote about uh, like like fairy and folk tales in her poetry and her own life um, as a, a German woman and the history that she uh, experienced. What's interesting is that uh, she like this poem kind of talks about it, but uh, her father was an educator in the years leading up to um, Hitler's rise to power. And when he rose to power, because his, her, her father was progressive, uh, like he was kind of um, booted out of his teaching position. So they had to flee to America, essentially. Um, pretty, um, pretty unfortunate. Um, uh, but and you see a little bit of that reflected in this poem today. Uh, so without further ado, let's talk about beginning with 1914. I will read it, do a little bit of analysis, and we will move on from there. Beginning with 1914. Since it always begins in the unlikeliest place, we start in an obsolete country on no current map. The camera glides over flower beds, for this is a southern climate. We focus on metals, a horse, on a white uniform, for this is June. The young man waves to the people lining the road. He lifts a child. He catches a rose from a wrinkled woman in a blue kerchief. Then we hear shots and close in on a casket draped in the Austrian flag. Thirty-one days torn off a calendar, bombs on Belgrade. Then Europe explodes. We watch the trenches fill with men, the air with live ammunition. A close-up of a five-year-old living on turnips, her older sister, my not-yet-mother, already wearing my daughter's eyes, is reading a letter as we cut to a young man with thick glasses, who lies in a trench and writes a study of Ibsen. I recognize him. He is going to be my father, and this is his way of keeping alive. Snow. Blood. Lice. Frostbite. Grenades. Stretchers. Coffins. Snow. Telegrams with black borders. On the widescreen, my father returns bringing his brother's body, my mother's father brings back his sons from the opposite edge. They come together under the oaks of the cemetery. All who will be my family are here except my sister, who is not yet imagined. Neither am I, who imagined this picture, who now jumped to my snowy birthday in the year of the million mark loaf of bread. My early years are played by a blue-eyed child who grows up quickly, for this is a film of highlights." Like all documentaries false to the life, the work of selective memory. All I can hear of a painful childhood, the swastika appears and remains as the huge backdrop against which we're seen. The soundtrack of a hysterical voice is threatening us. We're heard as whispers shortly before my city burst into flames. My stand-in disappears from the film, which continues with scenes of terror and death I can't bear to watch. I pick up a new reel, a strange sequel set in a different location and made in another language, in which I am back. The colors are bright, the soundtrack is filled with music, the, gen the focus gentle. A man is beside me. Time-lapse photography picks up the inch meal growth of daughters toward the sky, the slow subversion of dark by gray hair. Little happens. The camera sums up the even flow of many years in a shot of a river. The principles from part one are missing, except for me, who is the connection. The time is now, and I am playing myself. 
in terms of analysis, that was beginning with 1914. Uh, but in terms of, uh, you know, n a narrative of the story, it's the character recounting aspects of their life as well as the lives of those close to them. Uh, it's told out of order, which is one of my, fa my favorite parts of this poem. It's what sticks to me, how Mueller just jumps around from, from like history point to history point, talking about uh, like a, a country that no longer exists, her grandparents, um, uh, her her mother and her father losing people during World War One, uh, and then uh, uh, Lee Sell as a, as a child uh, having to grow up pretty quickly, uh, which she says is due to them like uh, focusing on highlights. Uh, that it's not merely memory, it's just highlights. But you could also interpret that meaning that she has to grow up pretty quickly because after World War I, Germany fell into a depression. And she specifically mentions the million mark loaf of bread, like bread cost quite a bit of money uh, because of inflation during the time. So a young child might have to grow up pretty quickly if the family couldn't really afford the necessities. And then um, focusing on uh, like Hitler's rise to power and uh, flashing forward into the future where she's kind of in a more peaceful place. But the, as she notes, the principles aren't there from Act 1. Uh, and I, what I think that means is that many of her family members are dead. Um, and she's the only one who's left, which is pretty... Um, pretty sad uh, and unfortunate um, uh, about that but uh, it's it's she does know that like um, that like things are, are a little better like uh, the colors are bright the soundtrack is filled with music the focus gentle and it's in, in another language so her moving to America was a positive for her because she didn't have to deal with with Hitler or the the unfortunate chaos that came after World War two and she does seem pretty happy to have daughters as she mentions the daughters twice in this poem at once at the beginning saying that like uh like her mother uh has her daughter's eyes and um the uh the like uh the the inchmule growth of daughters toward the sky uh indicating you know what's important to uh Liesel or the narrator at, at this point in the in the poem uh, and again, um, this, this poem does talk about, you know, the out of order sequence of, of memory. Uh, and I think some of that is because of what you can bear to remember. Like if you're, if you had an unfortunate childhood, you're not going to try to remember everything. So things are going to look like a movie. They're not going to be sh like in sequence. Some of them are going to be out of focus. But also it's a, it's a, um, she's saying something about, um, about, about selective memory here. She's saying the work of selective memory, all I can bear of a painful childhood. The swastika appears and remains as the huge backdrop against which we're seen. Uh, and yeah, they're like, your, your memories are not in, in, in focus. It's jumping around, but also um, like what 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 also sticks out to me is is at one point she's starting to talk about like the memories of other people, like how how does she know what what happened to her grandmother or her mother or her father? She wasn't there to see it, so you know it it seems like a dramatization of of her life, and whether or not that's any most of this is actually true, I, I do think it might be true, because um, Lisa would have no reason to lie to us, but. Um, and we movies do tend to dramatize things, so maybe some of this might be exaggerated um, for for effect or something like that. Anyway, those are my thoughts on beginning with 1914, a pretty solid uh, poem. Uh, I I really enjoyed it, uh, specifically how she um she sort of compares her life to a movie and notes like how memory can put things out of sequence, but also cause a forgetting, especially with with events that are a little too painful. Um, particularly hits me pretty hard and is, is one that I think is worth reading. So I'll put a link to it in the uh, description as per usual. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. would love to hear from you. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this poet or this poem if they don't already know. Uh, and until then, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and out-of-sequence travels. Farewell.